self-timing Tony. Pamper, pamper, new shampoo. Gentle as a lamb, so right for you. you see applying the arm lock is my roommate, Queenie Dugan. And that's no way to treat Mr. T.J. Carmichael, head of Imperial Artist Studios. And that's me, Kim Tracy, coming out of the wall like a termite. No, we're not playing hide and seek. We're simply trying to keep Mr. Carmichael from finding out that... Well, I'll tell you about it in a minute. Don't go away. If you want lovely hair that's easy to care for, then you need a gentle shampoo. And new Pamper is the most gentle shampoo ever. Yes, gentle as a lamb. That's Pamper shampoo. You see, it takes a gentle shampoo to leave your hair so soft. It takes a gentle shampoo to leave your hair so easy to manage. It takes a gentle shampoo to leave your hair so bright, so flower fresh. And Pamper shampoo is really gentle. Gentle as a lamb. Pamper, Pamper, new shampoo. Gentle as a lamb, so right for you. Gentle as a lamb? Yes, ma'am. Pamper, pamper, new shampoo. Hollywood is pretty much of an early bird town. And Queenie and I like to get up as early as the next bird. But instead of having an alarm clock, we have a special arrangement with a local newsboy. He awakens us every morning at 8 sharp. See that nice old gentleman sitting there? That's Oliver Hampton. If your memory goes back to Rudolph Valentino, Wallace Reed, and Milton Sills, you must remember Oliver Hampton, one of the great names of silent pictures. Yes, Oliver Hampton lives in our court. And of course, he doesn't dream that we know all about his hijacking our paper every morning. Here, hold it, Oliver Hampton, a man who used to buy polo ponies like they were gumdrops. Let that be a lesson to you. Save your money. What money? Annuities. Put it away where you got it. Honest, Kim, I haven't bought a polo pony all week. Now, don't change the subject. I haven't even bought a gumdrop. I think I'll have some orange juice. Hello? Yes, I'll wait. It's the casting department at Imperial. The interview for Doc Rapture. You got it. Oh, keep your fingers crossed. Hello, Mr. Webb? Oh, hello, Jonesy. Yes, she's here. It's for you. For me? Hi, Jonesy. Yeah, I'm free today. I'd love to drown for you. <laughs> hey, who's saving me? Well, how about Hubie? He swims like a herring. Ah, <laughs> uh, thanks, Jonesy. Yeah, I'll tell him. Ten o'clock. Right. Well, not bad. Picked up a job for Hubie, too. I'm going to call Central Casting. Maybe I can get some extra work. Oh, no, you're not. You're keeping yourself available, honey. I just know that interview will come through. I hope so. Well, I better get Hubie out of bed or he'll sleep until Tuesday. Hi, Queenie. Oh, hello, Hubie. Hubie ain't home. He's gone to New York. Well, I'll quit your kidding, Hubie, and get over here. I've got a job for you. What kind of a job? I'll be with you in a minute, you... <laughs> oh, you nitwit. Come on, come on, we've got work to do. I'm gonna drown, and you're going to save me. Ten o'clock, Imperial. Oh, well, I haven't had breakfast yet. I better load up. Might be a long time before lunch. Hey, uh, what's the bit? Oh, Northwest Mounted Police stuff. Oh, that's swell. Hey, you remember when I double Nelson Eddy? Papa's little baby loves corn pone bread. Our song. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're on, Kim. Happy thinking. Happy waiting. <laughs>
No trouble at all. Make yourself comfortable. Thanks. Coffee's one thing we've got plenty of. Yeah, well, in the old days, I used to sit on the set and have my coffee every morning. I'd sit in my special chair with my name on it, and the young fellow would come by and say, Your coffee, Mr. Hampton. Your coffee, Mr. Hampton. <laughs> Hello? Speaking. I know I haven't had much experience, but oh, I'm sure I could play. I see. Bye. Trouble? Mr. Hampton, was it as hard to get a break in the old days as it is now? Yes, my dear, I'm afraid it was. Experience, he said. How can you get experience if you haven't got a job? Well, there's always summer stock for experience. Even that's no good for me. You have to be a name or a halfway name or a has-been who's... I don't mean has-been exactly. You know what I mean, like, uh, not exactly retired, but like you are. You're just between pictures. Oh, why don't I shut up? Yeah, well, it's been 20 years between pictures for me. If things don't pick up pretty soon, I'm just going to have to go into another business. <laughs> no a nice business? I'll join you. What's the number of Imperial? Number 2211. Hello, Mr. T.J. Carmichael, please. Mr. Carmichael? The head of the studio? Hello, hello. Is this you, Sophie? It's Oliver Hampton. <laughs> yes, it certainly has. Sophie. Do you think that T.J. could spare me a few minutes after lunch? Well, I'll tell you what. You, uh, pencil me in for right after lunch. Thank you, Sophie. Well, this calls for champagne. But I'll settle for another cup of coffee. And so we drove to the studio, Mr. Hampton and I, in his 1934 Rolls Royce. I'm Oliver Hampton. I have an appointment with Mr. Carmichael. Oh, yes, sir. Drive right in, sir. Thank you. All right, we're ready for Prince's running, dear. Running, dear. Prince is running, dear. Hey, Queenie, you're on. Come on, Nelson. <laughs> Newbie, there are no bananas in the Yukon. There are bananas. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, let's make one. Now remember, you're doubling two of the bravest people in the Screen Actors Guild. You roll them when she gets up on the rock. Say, uh, what was my line again? I'll save you. I'll save you, Queenie. <laughs> Newbie, would you please skip the Queenie? To be sure. All right, Queenie, action. You're an Indian princess picking moss. Picking moss. <laughs> dainty, dainty. You're not digging worms. All right, now. Slip on the rock. Now, fall. All right, Yubi, come on. Help. I'll save you. Oh, forget the tree. Come on, keep going. I'll save you. Help! Help! No! Swim over to her! Swim over to her and save her! 
No, Greeny, don't save him. All right, I'll get you. I'll get you. You're not supposed to save him. He's supposed to save you. Come on. I'll get you. No, cut, 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 cut. Somebody get a boat. All right. A seventy-dollar bet, and you ruined this. Well, I like bananas. Oh, you be. <laughs> Why, that's Queenie over there. Oh, I don't think he hates that water. <sighs> what happened? Oh, that Hubie and his bananas. Well, I like Hubert. <laughs> hey, what are you doing here? And Mr. Hampton. I don't know. Mr. Hampton thinks we've got an appointment to see T.J. Carmichael. T.J. Carmichael? <laughs> well, well, I'll get Daryl Zanuck and Jack Warner and we'll all have lunch. <laughs> Hello, Quimmy. Hi, Mr. Hampton. Come on, dear. We mustn't keep T.J. waiting. Poor old Mr. Hampton. I think he's flipped. I'm sorry, Mr. Carmichael is still at lunch. Oh. Well, in that case, I guess we'll just have to wait. There really isn't any use, sir. I'm afraid he's going to be tied up all afternoon. Come on, Mr. Hampton, let's go. Well, I'm sure he'd like to see me if you're just... All afternoon, sir. DJ. Well, I'll be a son of a gun, Ollie Hampton. Hello, Tom. Oh, well, well, who's, uh, uh... I'd like you to meet a young friend of mine, Kim Tracy. Well, any young friend of Ollie Hampton's is a young friend of mine, eh? Right, Ollie? <laughs> <laughs> Come in, Miss Tracy. Come right here. Come on, Ollie. We've got a lot to talk about. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Hampton. I... Oh, don't apologize for being young, my dear. <laughs> you know, I've known Ollie a long time. You can never imagine. I'm awfully glad to have a chance to talk things over with him. Sit down, Miss Tracy. Oh, uh, Ollie boy, have a cigar. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, uh, you're looking prosperous, Ollie. As you see, you still got the yacht. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I... Now, don't tell me you bought a bigger one. You know, Ollie is never satisfied unless he owns the biggest yacht and the longest automobile in town. Still driving those uh, fancy foreign cars? Well, as a matter of fact, I... Oh, he's got one all right. It's a Rolls Royce. There are two things I've always admired about Ollie. His eye for luxuries and his eye for a pretty girl. And I see you haven't lost either. You still play golf, I see. Yes, and I can still give you a stroke a hole, too. Oh, come now. Make a note. I'm playing golf. Oliver Hampton, 4 o'clock this afternoon, Lakeside. You can make it, can't you? I really just came in to see if I couldn't get Kim's career started for her. Career? You're an actress, Miss Tracy? Oh, and what an actress. Is that so? Turn around. Let me see your profile. By golly, Oliver, I think you brought me something. Fresh, natural charm, freckles across the nose, tomboy grin. Why, she's the girl next door. Kim Tracy. Even the name is perfect. Notify all departments. We're testing Kim Tracy for the younger sister in Dark Rapture. I couldn't believe it. The biggest break in my career had happened. Just like that. A dozen words over an intercom. I pinched myself to see if I was awake. Oh. Nothing wrong? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, let's rehearse the next one. Okay, let's go. Everyone is talking about new self-timing Tony because no other permanent is so easy, so fast, and so sure. It's easy because you don't take any test curls. There's no clock watching. No guesswork from start to finish. It's faster because self-timing Tony takes only 15 minutes to complete the waving action. And I mean complete. There's no underwaving, no overwaving. And it's sure. New self-timing Tony is timed so right, your wave just can't go wrong. And here's what a new self-timing Tony looks like from the very first day. Isn't this lovely? And you can get that kind of a wave every time from faster, easier, surer, new self-timing Tony. No matter what your last permanent was, make sure your next is a self-timing Tony.
They should see her Tony from this angle. Mm, you said it, Joe. Boy. It's a new, new Tony, a faster Tony. It's self-timing, 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 self-timing Tony. What did I do right? Make a note of it. Yes, sir. Lakeside called. They wondered if you'd mind teeing off at two instead of four. Well, yeah, two is fine. Oh, by the way, notify Mr. Hampton that I'll pick him up on the way out to the course. Any idea where I can reach him? Simple. Just call up the Beverly Hills Hotel. He's been living there for years. I did. They haven't heard from him for years. You then call up the yacht basin. I did. Filled in for a housing project, 1950. Well, well, well... That girl we're testing, she ought to know where he is. Uh, Kim, Kim... Kim Tracy. She's not home. Here's her address. She'll probably want to stop by. <laughs> La Paloma Court, Sweetser Street. I never heard of it. Well, what did I do? What's everybody sore at me for? Not everybody sore, Hubie. Just me. Well, why? Why? Instead of rescuing Princess Running Deer from drowning this morning, what was the Northwest Mounted Police doing? Floating flat on his face full of bananas. But well, Queenie, I like... I know, you like bananas. Queenie, are you through with the dishes? I like to rinse out my hose. Oh, could you rinse them out in the bathroom sink, honey? I can't. You're soaking your G-I-R-D-L-E. What's anybody want to soak a griddle for? Oh, your sandwich, Hubie. <laughs> Maybe that's about the test. And I'm too nervous. You. Me? Uh, I'm nervous, too. Oh, for guy's sakes. Yup. Is it Miss Tracy's apartment? Well, when Mr. Carmichael arrives, would you kindly tell him the New York office is very anxious to get in touch with him? Yup. I'll do that. Well? Hmm? What was it, Hubie? Oh, it was a message. They want him to call New York when he arrives. That was the secretary. When who arrives? Mr. Carmichael. Well, then say it. When Mr. Carmichael arrives, he's... Carmichael? <laughs> Coming here? Why? Oh, what's the difference? Why? If he sees Oliver Hampton, the famous yachtsman, living in a place like this. Oh, we gotta warn him. Hampton! Mr. Hampton! Where is he? He's just gotta be here. Mr. Hampton, come on, come on, wherever you are. Well, Mr. Sneed, we're looking for Mr. Hampton. Have you seen Mr. Hampton? Yes, I've seen him. And I'll see him again when he gets back with that lawnmower. The lawnmower? Unless he stopped to pick up some fertilizer. Fertilizer? He's going to do the gardening around here till he pays his rent. Well, what do we do if Mr. Carmichael sees Oliver? Organization, organization. Kim, get on the phone to Casey's. He, he might have stopped for a short beer. Hubie, get to the corner and head him off, the back way. Roger Wilco. The phone's dead. He probably didn't pay the bill. Come on, come on, our place. You wait here, Elvis. I'll see if this is the place. He's not a case. It's Carmichael. I'll get rid of him. Now, don't you answer the door. Hello, Mr. Carmichael. Can I help you? Well, yes, you might. Do you know uh, Kim Tracy? She's supposed to live around here someplace. Uh, she moved. Oh, moved? <laughs> moved. That's the way it goes. Looking for? Kim Tracy. Oh, Kim Tracy. I thought you said Slim Tracy. Oh, oh sure. She, sure. She lives right over here in this, oh. in this apartment. Just uh, go, go right on What's in. What's the matter with you? Oh, no, nothing, nothing. Uh, step right in, Mr. Carmichael. Well, where is she? Kim. Can't you call her louder than that? Kim? Well, uh, why don't you have a seat, Mr. Carmichael? I'll be right back. See, young lady, I am a very busy man. Can't you see?
stop that infernal racket. Oh, well, aren't you going to wait for Kim? What? Yeah, what are you doing? But it just makes it more cozy, don't you think? I know where she is. I do. She's in the patio. Look here, young lady, I know you're trying to be helpful, but I've got to be going. Say, can't you stop that noise? Oh, you're not going that way. Well, which way would you suggest? To the window? Oh, no, 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 don't go to the window. Oh, let me out of this manhouse. Oh, Gardner, got a match? Thank you. So I was to have my test. And why? Because I represented something Mr. Carmichael said he liked. The average American girl. The kid next door. Freckles, snub nose, and a plain old-fashioned name, Tracy. So what did they do? Mr. Carmichael had specifically mentioned he liked my freckles. However... The freckles must go. <laughs> and since Mr. Carmichael liked my simple girl next door quality... This sort of do it. Plenty of feathers. And lots of tool. We must have glamour. Mr. Carmichael even admitted he liked my name. So, of course... That's right. Imperial Artist's new find. What's your name, honey? Kim Tracy. Kim Tracy? No, no, no don't print that. Her new name now is, uh, Dale Vale. Dale Vale. <laughs> so, finally, we made the test. And the kid next door had moved so far uptown, I couldn't understand her myself. Action. <laughs> Yes, my dear, the martinis were perfectly delightful. Roger? Oh, we got absolutely stinking and passed out in the greenhouse. <laughs> Isn't it perfectly, utterly, delightfully devastating? Oh, brother. They come and they go. Without a pro game, you can't tell one from the other. Hi. Thanks, honey. Thanks, girl. We're on. Well, here's the cake. Did you spell everything right? Yep. From your F-R-E-N-S, friend. Oh, well, uh, I was running out of icing. Happy screen test to you. Happy screen test to you. Happy screen test. Hey, what's the matter? Well, wasn't the test any good, Kim? Yeah, and we cooked a cake and everything. Sorry, kids. It was all wrong. Well, what was all wrong? Everything, I guess, the part, the silly makeup, even the way I got the test in the first place. I wasn't any more right for that part than Hubie here. Oh, I couldn't have done it. Why, well, Mr. Carmichael gave me the part? Not because I was right for it, but as a favor to Mr. Hampton. Well, it's not a crime to accept a favor. Sometimes maybe it is. And we can't eat the cake, huh? Oh, sure we can. Say, I know what. Uh, why don't we go over and ask Mr. Hampton? All right. He's probably all alone. Hey, sure. Come on. Uh, oh, well, Andy, the coffee. Hubie, the cake. And don't eat. Just cut. Mr. Hampton. Mr. Hampton. We're having a party. Mr. Hampton? I wonder where he is. He probably went down to the drugstore. Look at this. Oh, all these great film roles. Here he is. Hey, the sin of Edward Gentry. Oh, here he is in The Last Chance. Oh, golly, Wanderlust. Bright Commandment. Oh, I remember that one. My mother took me to see it. Hey, you know something, Kim? This old guy has forgotten more about acting than we'll ever know. Now everybody's forgotten him. If only there were something we could do. There is. There is. We're going to expose him. Expose Mr. Hampton? Show him up for what he is. It's the best favor we could do him. But I don't see how that could help. Just leave it to Queenie. But this is fantastic. 
Oliver Hampton always made big money and saved it, so I understand. Well, he can't even pay his rent. But his yacht and his Rolls Royce. Now, don't tell me he doesn't drive a Rolls because I saw him with one at the championship fight. What fight? What champion? Why, the Barracanera fight in 1934. And we were... <laughs> 1934? Yes, Mr. Carmichael. It's the same Rolls Royce, only it's 20 years older. Sophie, make a note. Have the legal department draw up a stock contract for Mr. Oliver Hampton to take effect immediately. The salary is 200... Three? Three. Four. Four. <laughs> Three fifty weekly, Sophie. Oh, oh, Mr. Carmichael, there's one more thing. A little thing. Mr. Hampton, you look wonderful. Just wonderful. Yeah, well, you've no idea how good I feel being back in harness again. Ready to make one, Mr. Hampton? Aye. Aye, that I am. Proceed. Uh, just a minute, gentlemen. Just a minute, please. Something for you, Ollie. A present. A present? Thanks. Oh. That's wonderful. My own chair. Oh, gee, Mr. Hampton. Aren't you thrilled? Uh, Queenie, uh, will you please call up Mr. Snead and tell him I'll trim that back hedge tomorrow? <laughs> oh, Mr. Hampton, you don't have to do any more gardening. Oh, yes, I want to keep everything looking nice and neat. You see, I'm thinking of buying the place. <laughs> and there you have it. The rise and fall and rise again of Oliver Hampton. Back in a jiffy with some scenes from next week's show. Well, now to take my makeup off. Say, Kim, you catch on quickly. What do you mean? Well, I see you know about deep magic. Tony's new facial cleansing lotion. Yes, Deep Magic removes makeup better than any facial cleanser I've ever used. You're not kidding. Deep Magic's the greatest. Hey, let me show you something. Hey, Harry, what are you doing? Steady, girl. Now, this is eyeshadow. You know how tough this is to get off. Hey, come on. Please. Here's what a cleansing cream can do. See how much eyeshadow is left? Now, see what Deep Magic does. See? Every bit of makeup is gone. Gee, Harry, that cleans like magic. Sure, deep magic. Hey, Harry, give me more of that. Deep magic, facial cleansing lotion by Tony. This is Mr. J.G. Winkler III, director, producer, and author, enjoying a scene from his own masterpiece, Gas Becomes Electric. The star of the picture is Miss Daphne Duguay, alias Queenie Dubin. <laughs> what happens when an eccentric millionaire comes to Hollywood with big ideas and a checkbook to match? Tune in next week. <laughs> <laughs>